Hey everybody, this is Dana Scott, Hip Hop DX. We're here with DJ A Track. Shut it down, of course, here at the A3C Festival in Atlanta. How you doing, man? I'm great. How are you? Doing great, man. Absolutely great. And like I said, you know, I've been following your work for 20 years now. That's amazing. You know, dating back to the Peanut Butter Wolf's Subtext Drink Magazine compilation, man, with uh, Mad Lib. That was one of his breakout, yep. um, you know, CDs. There's Peanut Butter Wolf as well with AC Alone. Yeah. Way back then. You want to talk about how you? You know, you got on to that compilation and, and where that took you from there, if, you know, from that element of, say, the backpacker, uh, you know, element and, and, and into where you, you know, started working with uh, other artists, you know, into Kanye West? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I got my start in the underground hip-hop scene. And, um, you know, as a DJ, I'm always sort of, like, looking for what's going on musically that's most exciting at certain periods of time, right? So for me, in the late 90s, that was the underground hip-hop scene. Projects like what you were naming with Peanut Butter Wolf, but also, you know, that whole Fat Beats, raucous kind of scene, you know, I was friends with nonfiction in New York, and, and that kind of, that set, um, you know, I used to go, um, I was growing up in Montreal, I would go down to New York and perform at the Rocksteady Crew Anniversaries and that kind of stuff, Stretch and Barbados radio show, that's my background. Um, when Kanye came out with his first album, I met him and I started touring with him. I ended up working with him for, for four years. In that period, in the mid-2000s, it was kind of two things that were really pulling me, again, as a DJ looking for, you know, exciting stuff. On one hand, it was what Ye was doing, but on the other hand, I, I also discovered, like, some electronic music that was coming out of Europe that was, you know, in my view, not cheesy, in a sense, because I used to think that house music and, and, and the like was kind of corny for me but then like in 2005, 2006 it was certain artists that was making like electronic music that had a grittiness to it that my hip hop ear could appreciate and they would have like hip hop vocal samples and distorted synths and it just felt really, it had an attitude and that's when I started you know working in some electronic music into my sets before the word EDM was even coined but just mixing that up with hip hop and open format DJing and like taking that DJ approach of just looking for fresh beats and anything that I rock with, I just put it in a set, you know, not thinking about what's the genre really. And then I found a fool's gold around that time and the last 10 years for me has been growing more as a producer, remixer, but also having fool's gold as a platform to put on new artists also. So does that speak to your synergy with Kanye? Basically, in, in terms of having your ear for other types of music that are, you know, electronic beyond, just, you know, because I saw that was stronger with the you know, the, uh, the, the fusion with Daft Punk and everything. I mean, I mean, at the same time, Kanye, you know, his own ear noticed that there was something interesting in those different sounds too. So it's not as if I told him to use this or that. I was just, I'm a DJ that knows a certain amount of music. And you know, we just had a very trusting relationship. But it was it was you know an amazing phase of my life to work with him. I grew a lot. You know, I, I sort of absorbed a lot, and then I went and started my own stuff. Right now, with vinyl, of course, you come from the you know crate digger background, and uh, vinyl has basically physical media has been. Uh, reintroduced in so many ways and reissues and such you know do you ever find time to still go and dig at, at local record stores and such like that yeah once in a while I definitely make time for it I think there's definitely a magic that comes from digging through crates that you can't replicate any other way now my record collections in storage I, I make all my music from digital files I work on the laptop I DJ off the laptop so I definitely don't feel like I need my vinyl for anything in particular and, you know I think it's very important to adapt to the times and just to use whatever medium is 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 the most dynamic now um, but do I do I take a Sunday off here and there to go to a record shop and dig through crates sure I love it I love the smell of it <laughs> you know and I love that yeah and just yeah that discovery process you don't know what's going to be in those bins there's such an element of chance you know to what you're gonna find and when I dig for records I don't even I, I don't know what I'm picking out you know so there's it's such an element of like serendipity and, and coincidence where you you look at a cover and you're like I don't even know what this is but it looks like it's gonna be fresh and you just put a couple dollars down on it